so let us look at fundamentals of uh, gis what is gis the ppt courtesy is uh, from dr gregory and the content of uh, this presentation will be defining gis and related terms like what is geographic information gis as a software or as a set of tools or gis as an approach to analysis also what is geographical information science now gis is uh, not complete without uh, data so data in gis there are various type of data in gis like spatial uh, their attribute there are georeference data there are raster and vector data and various layers of data you know these are the data we are going to talk about that and how to query in gis database because gis is geographical information system you need to have uh, a information part to to store retrieve you know and to uh, modify it so you need to have a query uh, for a gis database that we are going to look at and then integrating data with the gis so what is uh, geographical information what is actually gi the information that refers to a location on the earth surface if you have a earth surface or if you uh, perceive a earth surface information about any location is gi so it has both a spatial spatial means location wise and a thematic component thematic means means based on some theme like like population like um, uh, census data like hospitals admissions data and relief data these are the theme because a map is made uh, uh, on the basis of uh, some theme because on single map you cannot place everything you have to have a map for uh, relief data for some transportation network there is a different spatial and thematic component on that map and for example a photograph or a painting of a building right so location component can be an explicit for example a coordinate or a precisely defined administrative unit this is where the spatial component come or uh, vega like the area about mm, around london this is this is a periphery or um, in gaelic uh, speaking areas this is also a area and then comes gis geographical information system so gis is uh, you know it is it is it is a broad system but if we uh, you know make it somewhat concise we can talk it as a software so it's a computer system that allow us to handle information about the location of the features of phenomena on the earth surface and it has yes yeah, has all the functionality of a conventional database management system along with functionality of computer mapping system so you have a computer mapping along with database if they both are combined they can be termed as a gis so gis is essentially a dbms database management system that allow us to explicitly handle the spatial data for example we have arcgis um, data uh, operate with this uh, dbs system or we can say uh, a type of software for gis we have arcview we have map info there are there are so many you know they are open source they are proprietary so gis system it's a toolkit also you can term it as a so software you can say it is a toolkit to for manipulating uh, spatially the uh, the data or the system the functionality can be calculating distances and adjacencies changing the projections in the scales and integrating the disparate sources okay and analyze uh, analyze this spatially means what whatever you have you need to you are able to analyze them like quantitative analysis like exploratory spatial data analysis and qualitative analysis and foremost is visualizing the data what are maps you can visualize map you can visualize a c table animation and virtual landscape is 3d and 10 and everything what you have or uh, known in your studies as far as gis or information of geography is concerned if you're able to visualize it you can say it is a gis and the approach will be of gis is to explore the database because the database is an important uh, backbone of your gis system so uh, you can explore in a conventional way or rather uh, geographically so it allows us to think that application of location it allows us gis allows us to think it holistically and should not be restricted by vendor provided functionality all the software today which are available 
दे हैव पाइथन प्लग इन और एनी अदर यू नो लैंग्वेज प्लग इन और ऑप्शन दैट यू कैन प्रोग्राम यूर सेल्फ यू कैन एट द फंक्शनैलिटी बाई यूर सेल्फ लाइक इन इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द फेमस क्वांटम जी आई ए सॉफ्टवेयर देन यू हैव प्लग इन यू कैन मेक यूर ओन प्लग इन एंड यू कैन एड रिटर्न पीपल कैन यूज इट सो दिस जी आई एस शुड बी यूज इमेजिनेटिवली टेकिंग इन टू अकाउंट वॉट द एडवांटेजेस एंड डिबिटेश इंफॉर्मेशन एंड द ट्रडिशन ऑफ ह्यूमैनिटीज स्कॉलरशिप ऑल्सो इफ वी जस्ट टेक अ फील्ड विच इज़ वेरी नियर टू जी आई एस वी हैव जोग्राफिकल इंफॉर्मेशन साइंस वॉट इट डज इट डील्स विद मेकिंग अप्रोप्रिएट और बेस्ट यूज ऑफ जोग्राफिकल इंफॉर्मेशन एंड इट इज़ क्लोजली रिलेटेड टू जी आई एस बट इज नॉट एन एप्लीकेशन स्पेसिफिक फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू हैव वेरियस एनालिसिस टेक्निक्स वी हैव वेरियस विजुअलाइजेशन टेक्निक्स वेरियस एलगोरिथम्स फॉर जोग्राफिक डेटा दिस इज साइंस जोग्राफिकल इंफॉर्मेशन साइंस सो एज आई अर्लियर मैंशन द विदाउट डेटा जी आई एस हैज नथिंग टू डू सो वॉट is uh, data so there are various types of data there are two types of data that are stored for each item in the database for whichever data is stored it has uh, essentially two types of data there are so many things which are attached but let us talk about the attribute data for example uh, say what a feature is like the statistics of the text images and sound and while the spatial data it says where the feature is the positional uh, positional information the coordinate uh, information the vector based discrete features like what polyn line polygon they all are coordinate based and the rest raster data that is a continuous surface as you see uh, when you take a image to a photograph of a particular location and then georeferencing data this is first is to capture and then to georefer it so how can we capture it to, this is uh, by scanning you can uh, scan all of the map converted into raster data you can convert it via scanning computer scanning or rather digitizing you the individual features selected from the map as point line polygons so you are actually making the data as vector and then geo referencing is initial scanning digitizing gives coordinate in inch from bottom left corner of digitizer or scanner now the real world corner coordinates are different so they are found for four register point on the capture data you need to have a location you have to map the screen data or the paper data with actual geographic location so these are used to convert the entire map onto a real world coordinate system we all know so this is how um, georeferencing is being done or considered we have um, this as a location and after transform coverage into real world coordinates you have these coordinate as these value these are the values of the coordinates which are actual real world coordinates and these are the screen coordinates and then the layers uh, what are the layers there are vector layers there are notation layers there are various layers so data on different themes are stored in separate layers so as each layer is georeferenced layers from different sources can easily be integrated using location so this can be used to build up complex models of the real world from widely disparate sources there are so many sources you have different information you can stack it together in the form the, of the layers and now when you see it you get all the information so it's a real world uh, what you are seeing on your computer on your or on your uh, printable uh, paper so this is how Uh, rest raster data is there you have a scale of the data you have grid cell size your maximum altitude you have your minimum altitude okay so this is how information can be um, retrieved and what raster data has it has been seen here otherwise if i just uh, remove these lines you'll not be able to appreciate it what is this uh, you know for a layman this is nothing this is just a distorted image and what about vector data we have vector data these are the point data we this is the shape this is the value or the attributes which are attached to this all these points and while these are the polygons this you can see as a polygon okay red are the point and these are the polygons so these polygons also have some name so we have the vector data along with their attribute information and this is what i was talking about layers 
uh, and some you know this is a uh, area which is of our interest now we have transportation route just make a layer and just stack it on or place it in, merge it demographic information migration patterns the libraries the bookstores the book production so if you want some book information out here you can make a thematic map based on this book history and now querying GIS data you have you have talked about GIS now talked about data now you need to query also so attribute queries to select features using attribute data that is using structured query language that is SQL uh, results can be mapped or presented in conventional database form or in either the form you would want to and can be used to produce maps of subsets of the data or chloropath map okay you can make a subset of the map that, that is called the chloropath map and um, you can also have a spatial query that is clicking or you know finding information on features on the map to find out their attribute values you can just click it and all a pop-up will come and all the information you will be able to see so used in combination these are very powerful way of exploring spatial patterns in your data like attribute query and spatial query this is how attribute query in 1860s the lung disease was was shown so, so the spatial data these are the registration district these are the attribute data uh, the mortality rate per 1000 from lung disease among men age 55 to 60 and the source is registrar general this uh, decennial supplement and the query is select areas where mortality rate is 58 so we have a map or we have an information where we have a special data attribute data and now you are querying that uh, select areas where mortality rate or the, the death rate is greater than 58 you can see that you get data so easily if you increase or decrease this number you will you will probably getting some other areas this is the power of attribute query or query the JS database so this is the district this is the county and this is the rate okay you can click it and you can verify it now making mapping through attribute query becomes so easy that uh, we have uh, we can make some intervals and b depending on the interval you can very well see this is a map this is a north this is scale this is the source these are the these are the legends and a map just through attribute query you can make a map and this is so useful for the decision makers and then this, uh, this data integration is overlaying which which i was speaking earlier as stacking and in you know, merging so joining two layers to create a new layer the output layer will contain both the spatial and attribute data from both of the input layer how this is one layer this is second layer combine them this is the output layer so we have a baroni and water combined together and this is how the formal or final attribute data will look like so uh, the conclusions of what we discussed there are certain advantages of GIS there are certain limitations of GIS the advantage is that you can explore, explore both geographical and thematic components of the data in holistic way and stresses it stresses, stresses the geographical aspect of the research question and it allows GIS allows handling and exploration of large volumes of data which is not possible individually or by human so it also allows integration of data from widely disparate sources various sources combine them and integrate them in one platform it allows analysis of data to explicitly incorporate the location as well and it also allows the GIS a wide variety of forms of visualization now there are the limitations of GIS also some sometimes data are, uh, data are quite expensive and, uh, and because learning curve on GIS software can take long but now this is not a limitation because there are very self-explanatory GIS software available also it shows a special relationship but, not, but uh, it does not provide absolute solution it just provide but you know people are working on it and origins in the earth sciences and computer science so solutions may not be appropriate for humanities research because for GIS you, you because the information system is there database is there a computer science uh, person is going to make it and he will be able to understand more but you know if you have a good IQ 
or if you're working on this uh, geography for for years or th i don't think this will be a limitation so thank you so much take care of yourself